All right, ladies, it's time to get out into the real world. Well, ladies and apparently one gentleman right back there. Let's do it. Welcome back. It's Dave and it's a Brand new day for uh, some of the chickens here. So we have the eight, we had the coop edition, talked about that, had them as chicks, got them, you know, uh, through the mail, uh, did not have good success with mortality. Um, not trying to diss the, the seller or anything like that. In fact, I'm not even gonna mention them. However, um, we did have about 50% mortality. I don't wanna do that anymore. Uh, I did find a source of local birds and actually ordered and I got six more from them and they're still in a brooder in the garage. However, um, these girls are moving outside from, from the addition. They're going to be joining the main flock. So I have six birds right now, a Rhode Island red, two Bard Rock or Plymouth Rock and um, three Dominiques. I have sent them outside to play. And I have turned the younger girls loose. They're not super happy with me. And they really don't seem to know what to do. So I've turned them loose. And uh, I had planned on... They're in the run with me right now. I had planned on um, turning them loose in the yard to free range with the big girls. But they are so freaked out right now. I think I'm just going to limit them to the run. And then, of course, they'll have to go in and bed tonight with, with the older girls. So I'm going to turn you around here real quick. And here they are. So <laughs> they're, uh, this is the bottom side of the coop. They're apparently used to having a roof over their heads because they will not come out from underneath here. And they're, they're pretty freaked out. So um, what I've got here are eight birds. I've got three speckled Sussex, two Delaware. Those are the white. And then around the corner here, the most bashful of them all, I have what I was told are three well summer hens. However, it turns out I have two well summer hens, and you see his peeking his head out back there. I do. I am now the proud owner of a rooster. Um, I did not have a rooster before, so he's not being introduced into a flock that has a rooster, which I, uh, from all of my everything I understand, can be rather violent. Oh, they're running to the other side, so let me turn them around here. Sorry. Uh, and there they are. Um, yeah, they're pretty freaked out. So they've been inside most of their life. Uh, a couple brief excursions for some of them. Uh, but the, for the most part, they're, they've are they been indoor chicks. So we're in the coop. We're in the run, excuse me. And we're, um, we're just... Uh, exploring right now the as i said before i've turned the big girls out to play they're roaming in the yard somewhere and uh these girls are getting um getting used to their new uh, new digs they still haven't found the water or the food and uh tonight they will have to go into the coop and uh sleep uh i prepared a lot of this yesterday um and uh wanted to make sure that I had them in the best position possible. So this is the run. It's 12 by uh, 25 to 30 feet long and currently houses six chickens. They have plenty of room. It's now going to house 14. They still will have plenty of room. The coop itself is about almost 45 square feet. So they have just under that they have access to right now. So they'll have just under three feet per, per bird. However, the, um, coop opens directly up into the run and so they have immediate access first thing in the morning to go outside they don't have to wait on me to come out or or anyone else to come out and take care of them um i broadcast most of the most of the food here do have a feeder here next to my uh got a couple bags sitting here but i do have a feeder there i don't really use it a whole lot i find that um, broadcasting really makes the birds dig for the food and really scrape so yesterday I got home from work and um, 
this whole this basically this whole run mucked it out it was about three wheel, wheelbarrows full of uh, old straw and uh, pine shavings and whatnot and you know what if you have chickens you know what whatnot is but it was pretty uh, pretty broken down pretty um, degraded and so we scooped all that up got I got all that raked up and then put in the bo uh, wheelbarrow had three wheelbarrows full we took to the took to the garden um, I'm counting on that being the best fertilizer ever and then I raked out everything that was in the coop which I really it, it, it had not been done in almost a year um, not massively probably nine months I, I do I did all winter I did deep litter I just kept I would add pine to it it worked great I had very minimal smell in fact it wasn't until it started getting really warm here in the last week that you really started having noticeable smell. So we took care of all that, cleaned all that out. That stuff in the coop is really green. It's really not broken down. That went into the compost. The stuff that was out here was just broken down completely. That went straight into the garden, into a fallow bed that I have right now, several of them actually. And then we took all new pine bedding and spread it around and then we took new pine bedding inside as well so everything's fresh and clean as a daisy for the introduction of my new visitor of my new uh, residence and i i share that with you not to not to not to just be oh look at me look what i did but i i don't know maybe you have this also i i, I try to talk to people about being prepared about being ready for whatever may happen um you know, I'm not really talking about zombie apocalypse or anything like that, but just being prepared and being independent and being able to take care of yourself. And I, I hear so often, oh, I have a job. I work, I work nine to five. I work eight hours a week. I work 40 hours or eight hours a day. I work 40 hours a week, you know, da, 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 da. I do the same thing. And it really boils down to what you um, find important what you what you look look for as far as being important and being something you need to take care of we the, the fact of the matter is we all choose the things we want to do and if we don't want to do something and you don't want to be uh, part of something you're always going to find a reason not to it's not because you worked eight hours a week it's not because you're tired it's not because whatever happened more often than not, especially if it's repeated, like a pattern of behavior, it's because you didn't, you don't want to do it, and you don't see the value in it, or you don't see um, the return for your time. Um, I come home almost every day and work two or three hours outside, be that with chickens or the garden or bees or whatever. I got bees. Oh my gosh, I'm so far behind on those, and many times many many times i'm tired and many many times i really feel like i'm playing catch up sometimes i'm like working from behind because um it's the task that's most 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 belated or most behind that i jump to next and not always what needs to be done right at that time but that is what it is and it's what i find this important i find this um I find this to be something that that needs to be taken care of in my mind it helps me sleep at night to know that i i'm doing what i can to be prepared for my family and and for my family to be prepared for whatever may happen and that's something that each of us has to has to um gauge as far as what we we want to do and how, how where we want to go and where we want to be prepared I would assume because you're watching this video or hopefully still listening to me that you are of that same mindset or maybe you really like chickens and you're tired of looking at a, uh, a chicken run. So let's see, let's turn back here and here's the girls again. Um, these birds are, these birds, you know, you to make a commitment to take care of these birds and then they take care of you as well. And that's where we're at right now. So I think there's a lot going on in this world. And I've tried to keep this channel very apolitical. And I'm going to turn you around here. Things are happening in this world. And lots of things feel out of sorts and feel out of control. And um, it's difficult to know what's going to happen next. And what's, uh, what's um, which end is up. Uh, this past weekend, there was a major hacker attack. Hopefully you were 
not in a state or uh, in an area that was affected. DMVs uh, in multiple states, um, met multiple corporations uh, were held held hands, ransom to, uh, to hackers, and including uh, the Department of Energy, as well as possibly, I believe, the Inter International Atomic Energy Commission. I'm not sure. In any event, many, many institutions and agencies that most people find uh, would be, they would consider to be secure and, and unassailable were assailed and they were breached. And something as silly as that or as serious as that can make all the difference. Um, a hacker takes down the grid or even just the grid in your area and you could be without power for weeks or months. Would you know what to do and would you know how to take care of yourself? And do you have the things on hand to take care of yourself? Are you prepared food wise? Do you have a, a, the ability to cook without electricity or without natural gas? Do you have, um, uh, the big one is always water. Do you have a, a source of water, clean water that you can drink, that you can use for bathing in order to keep yourself clean? as well as to uh, your own personal waste management. Do you have um, the ability to dispose of bodily waste when the power goes down? Those are all things to think about. They're all things that I think about a lot. I, don't, I wouldn't say I obsess, but, uh, but, they're, but they're things to think about, especially in, in an era where it seems like uh, more and more we really are having trouble relying on institutions and governments and agencies and uh, alphabet soup named uh, in, uh, well I guess agencies that that were supposed to be here for the benefit of the people more and more it seems like they're not here for the benefit of the people so I'll leave you with that that got a little weird and philosophical maybe for just letting chickens out but you know what the heck um, Stay safe, stay prepared, and I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.